I'm here in sunny Brooksville, Florida with my 1980 Corvette Stingray here, which just a couple days ago was actually abandoned in a vacant lot somewhere in central Tennessee. I bought the car sight on scene, and before I even saw it, I registered it in a burnout computation right here at Leadfoot City. I'm actually in the middle of the burnout pit where the computation is going to take place in two days. I have that much time to sort this car out, figure out all the issues, and get as much power as I can to the rear tires to put on some sort of show. I've got an idea, and it rhymes with boost. I'm Derek. Welcome to Vice Grip Garage. Easy. Come on now. Shut off. You can do it. You just need to turn off. You gotta stop. Oh, that seemed fine. Also, the horn button hit me in the face. Overall, not good. That was definitely not good. <sighs> The lack of brakes makes it really hard to kind of figure out where you're going. So I think I will actually have to address that. Oddly enough, it has rear brakes and not front brakes, which is slightly inconvenient. I think we have a fire, maybe. Oh, no. That's just, that's just sand. It was running a little bit of... We'll just pretend we didn't see that and just shut this real quick. There we go. So, we got to do something to this because that is not going to win a burnout competition. Let's roll it over to the shed. I think I got some stuff we can kind of brighten this thing up with. So if you guys remember my 72 Chevelle that's on the channel, I don't know what episode, 39, no, 42, something like that. I took off a YN142 and a custom built Holly and some goodies. This is everything that's on the table right here came out of that Chevelle. It was sitting in the basement in a cardboard box, so I figured Miles will just throw it on the Corvette and see what happens. This should give us 70, 80 ponies, maybe 90. It'll definitely be overcarbed and running rich, which I won't fix. And then I've got an air cleaner for it. I do have a rev limiter. This is actually a marine unit. There are some name brand units out there in similar color that are fantastic products, but this is cheaper. And it also has a 5,000 RPM pill that comes with it, uh, which I want. The other flavors come with like 55, 65, and that won't handle that. And then if I have time, we'll maybe put an AFR gauge in it so we can see, you know, what's going on with the engine. But eh. So I'm going to start with this and basically show you over here. we got quite a bit of work to do. Pretty much the entire top end of this engine needs to come off. Fuel make it happener, lightning whirler, all the lightning hoses. Got to take the fan off. It's just going to, it's quite a bit of work. In fact, the AC pump, I think I even got to take that off because the old bracketry hooks into the intake over here. So that's not going to work either. So it's going to be quite a bit, and now it is just really hot. So I'm going to let it cool down a little bit, and then we'll start digging in. Look at the ants. So this floor 
has already been shop backed like four or five times and this water just keeps coming back it's completely flooded and I've got these ants just I mean they're all over the place I can't get rid of them so I'm going to shop vac it again and then we're going to lay some ant traps and some sort of bait and I got some sticky pads for rats and snake stuff and I pretty much the whole aisle in Walmart it just went yep we're going to dump that in there and hopefully we have some sort of chemical reaction get that cleaned up we can do that while it's cooling down I guess Oh, this smells so bad. It's like boiled vomit. Oh. Those are all ants floating in there. I just can't explain that. Well, we'll just put the lid back on and uh, pretend we didn't see that. Deal with it later. I'm just I'm telling you what, you you get on my nerves. It's, it's go time. I think about three of these on this side. You're supposed to fold these into a box, but no, we're just gonna lay them. Lay them out flat, just really get some out of them. Dome light's working today. I'll be. How many I got? Plenty. Put one back. See, here's an ant right here. Get on there. Oh. Wow, those do not mess around. What is this thing? First victim. Some sort of jumping creature with legs. This car is clean. All right, the very first thing I'm gonna do here is just find top dead center because I wanna mark my lightning whirler up here before I pull all that out of the housing. So when we go to put it back together, I want this to fire right off and make sure that I'm not 180 out. So I pulled the first sparkulator out and it's running pretty rich, which was another benefit of putting these in. We got it running last time. But I'm going to stick my finger in there as I get close to the timing mark here. And then I can make sure we're on the right stroke. Whoops. <laughs> got to take it out of gear. That might help. I might have to break down and hook my Lone Wolf 6000 up so I can just bump the starter. 14 feet across. I've been spinning this for. I just can't believe that it would take this long. There it comes. This engine is just piping hot. It's almost like it just did a big burnout. Get these. Ouch. It's hot on the wrist. Oh, I can't even put that hand down there. Try to get this air banana scooper inner thing out of the way and try to get all the stuff on the perimeter that's just you know the things that you yell at and you say I should have just moved that I'm gonna try to do that first that seems to be doing nothing so I'll just go over here and work on this one for a little bit I missed the very first step which is taking the hood off should probably do that first. I don't think the blower is going to clear the hood, even though that's a 142 and it's shorter. I just don't see, I don't see that clearing. So I think I'll do that next actually is, oop, fuck off. Yeah, I'm already tired. Those bolts so long, I don't know how it didn't come out the top of the hood. That just doesn't make sense to me. I just don't understand why they had to do this. Oh yeah. Whew. Fiberglass, nice and light. That looks tacky, right? Perfect. Yep, there's the thing there. Yep, yep. That's broken. Good. That's great. I think I can 
take the fuel, make it happen or off, just with the intake and everything. Try to speed some of this up. Get the lightning whirler out quick first. Oh great, that went in the engine. Well, I just can't fit nothing in here. I'm about to get the torch and just... Ooh, this is manufactured in 79. That's neat. There we go. Nice shiny distributor. That was actually in the car when I purchased it. So they had definitely done some work to it. I don't know what brand it is. It says Moldbultron. Something off Amazon, probably. But that's a bonus, because I didn't have to mess with this. Just got to find somewhere to put this where I can lose it. <clears throat> Get out of there. Yep. Uh, nope. Yep. What is this thing? I don't know. I don't know what that is either. Don't know what that is. Don't need it. What is this? Oh, this actually runs the windshield wipers through the control here. And you got to be a little careful with these Corvettes because the headlights actually run on vacuum cans as well. Or actuators. And then there's a storage thing that does, it does, there's air in it and whatever. So you got to be a little bit careful when you're snipping stuff on these because you just, you might get into something you didn't mean to. I wonder if there's still any ice cube juice in here. Gonna find out. Yep. Well, that was not expected. How do you recycle that? I don't know. Ants are back. They're really mad. It's getting worse. I think they figured out her plan. They're coming out of the door seal now. Put your hog. Making slow but slow progress here. I'm trying to kind of let the coolant get down from 374 degrees to at least a boiling 200 because I got to drain the radiator because the thermostat housing's got to come off. And this place is nice in here. I really don't know where to put my feet in here as well. So I don't want to spill more than 17 gallons on the ground. So I'm just kind of slowly working my way through this intake. Yeah. Don't know where the other end went. That's fine. Figure it out later. I wonder if a guy could just get an impact on this, some of these. Great thing about a Chevrolet is 5 8 9 16 and a half. You could pretty much rebuild an entire car. And it's pretty consistent across the board. Maybe a channel lock. This is where you dump fuel onto a boiling engine and just hope it doesn't go up and smoke here. Good opportunity to clean the hands a little bit. All the intake bolts to go around here and get off. And I got this bracketry up here I got to decide. I decided to keep the AC intact because it does have what appears to be 134 in it and she is plumb full. So I'm going to try to leave this on. And I'm hoping that it'll stay put without this brace or without that brace. So basically just one bolt. Sure. We're not running a belt on it, so it should stay put. Maybe. Probably not. But that way I don't have to forever and ever and ever and leak stuff everywhere. So I'm going to wrestle with these for a while. And after I get the intake bolts, we'll come back and see where I'm at. There we go. Rock stuck in there. There comes the coolant. I don't want to do avoid this as long as possible, but well, you can't even see anything under this thing. There's a thingamabob to let the juice out, but I can't even know where it's at. I think that's the cross member. We'll find out. Yeah, 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 yes. What was that? I don't know. Okay, sure. That looks like it did something. Jessica wouldn't let me bring my Harbor Freight ones. I don't know why. So you gotta go with the AC Delco if you want them to work. Yeah, that seems like it worked. So what I'm gonna attempt to do here is 
little trick I got up the guy's sleeve. I'm gonna drop the lower rad hose off, and if I jab my brand new, dang it, wet vac right into that, this should suck out the rad, and the thermostat's open, we should get a little bit out of the block. But all I really need to do is get enough down where I can pull the intake off, and the coolant passages don't spill out, fill the crankcase, make a mess on the floor. I've done this quite a few times, with about a 22% success rate, which is, that's good enough. First thing you gotta do is just get the clamp off, spill a few gallons on the floor. Normally, oh, well, get your screwdriver, step two. Oh, where's my pan thing? I'm guessing that's where it'll leak out. Not quite sure. Resume operation mess maker. This has gotta be the worst vehicle to work on. Everything is just so, jammed in here <laughs> come on now it's time to go off we're gonna we're gonna go off now i think that's hot liquid can't tell my left hand's in there oh yeah it's smoking so that's i think that means heat turn this on so now the vacuum is sucking all of the coolant out of the engine and drop it right into that bucket for us so we don't have to do anything. And this is how you modulate the flow. Just open up your cap. There, no mess. See an orange screwdriver? Fuel pumps, WD-40, fire extinguisher, might need that. These high dollar SEMA cars, you just, you gotta protect the paint on them. Getting kind of nervous, it almost looks like I know what I'm doing here. That's not my intent. I'm telling you what, it is hotter than 1990s Britney Spears in here. I mean, it's just, my eyeballs are sweating. I can't concentrate. I, my arms are sweating. I like how we're coming up with these ideas as I'm already half a day into this. I'm just, I'm already losing stuff and I, I just, I just got started. <sighs> well, for Pete's sake. Found a vacuum leak, I bet. That bolt there was barely hanging on. That was probably part of the issue. It would idle down on a guy. She just wanted to run. And then of course it doesn't want to turn off either. It just keeps on going. Lightsabers? I don't know what that means, but it sounds cool. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sure. <sighs> Looks fine. Oh, that's off. Got my socket back. I need to find a small... Here we go. And then we can put the bolt trays in here. That one. That one. already over this. We should spray paint something or I don't know. Something way cooler. What did we do with the screwdriver that we lost and recovered and lost? One thing I'm excited about getting this intake off is we can actually see the health of the engine. It gives you a pretty good idea anyway what kind of maintenance she's had, if she's had frequent oil changes and Sometimes you can even tell new parts. I have no idea what this guy was doing with this, but we had a new distributor, water pump, chrome timing cover. We have evidence of the intake being off. I had thought that it might already have a camshaft in it, but I mean, it has a stock idle, so I don't know if you just replaced the cam with the stock one or what. I don't have time to put a cam in this thing. I considered it, but I got this like alien front on here and getting the rat out and trying to figure out how to put a thumb stick in there is not something I'm wanting to do right now. I'll tell you that. This fuel line's about ready to get cut off too. 
Yep. <sighs> yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yep. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's not quite getting over there. Mm. Oh, my wobbler's over there. <sighs> Right in my eyes. Just keep going. You just fight through it. You don't need those. Sulfur or something. I don't even know what that was. It's burning though. There we go. Well, I don't know how to run these jobble walkies. They just, I bind them up. I just never seen. Now this is stuck on here. Oh, look at this. I just use a screwdriver. I knew that the whole time. I was just kind of showing you why this is a good way to do it. Will that work over here even? I'll be dipped. It does. I learn something new every day. Ooh, no excitement. That's good. Okay, I think this intake madubi should come off of here now. There we go. Just like that. How's it look? Oh, it's not too bad. I just dropped some dirt in there, but... It's not new push rods by any means. Most likely not new lifters then, but... There's not a bunch of sludge built up in here or anything like that. I get the vacuum out and clean some of the stuff up, but that's good news. That's why I only drop about 58 pounds of junk in here. Once you get over 70 pounds, it could possibly do some damage. Trip hazard. Might have to get out the whisker do and cheek poker and the retina ruiner. See if I can clean some of this up. Really stubborn around the water jackets. I think I'm gonna have to get a razor blade scraper. Ooh, do I have one? Stuff, things, spice grip, double A batteries, things. That's the second razor blade in like 32 seconds that I've broken. <sighs> mm -hmm, mm. I just hear metal breaking a lot. That's, I guess that seems normal. <laughs> Not very happy with that, but I guess it's going to have to work. What do we got? Fire it up. Yellow, white. All right, so we got party, disco, paparazzi. Oh, I like that one. Oh, yeah. Actually, it's making me sick. Turn it off. Lightning, it's not doing anything. Oh. It, it does it like every 30 seconds or so. You just got to eat chips with it. Yeah, cop car. That one scares me. Yeah, well, that's superbly good enough. We put a little bit of effort in it, and that's probably enough to get by. Nope, I can't leave that. Coming back in. Oh yeah, I'm glad I did, that was a lot. How did I miss that? I don't know. These dang water jackets and small block chubbies, if they're not perfect, you're gonna get a crankcase full of green goo, and that ain't good. Okay, now it's time. It's gotta be. Oh, it's got a nice big blast too. Ant, spider, it does kill them immediately. Just soak this thing down. It has a very pungent, illegal chemical spell to it, but that's fine. I'm sure with the windows down, it'll dilute it a little bit. It's not fresh floral, like they say. It's more like burning nuclear warfare smell but that's done i think this might be the non-flammable too it is wipe this down a little bit just kind of getting this halfway clean we're going to lay in some new intake gaskets and then we could put the base or the intake portion of the 142 blower in get that all set up torque down 
And by torque, I mean just go until your face turns red and your elbow hurts. And just even it out a little bit, you know. This is pretty much a Craigslist rebuild. If we were to spray paint this, brand new. Everything. Bearings. Whole nine yards. Mm-hmm. Yep. Intake gasket. Got it. There's two of them. Yep. What I never understood is does the slashy side go out? That's what I always do. I think that's out. Something like that. Never use these, please. The rubber gasket on the china walls. Basically what happens is either immediately or over time, they squish out on the front or the back and you get massive oil leaks. Just run a bead of RTV down there and be done. Throw these in your toolbox for an emergency, just in case you don't have any silicon, you can pop over and put those in. Poker sticker jammer upper. Oh, there we go, it's working. You can use rubber cement, contact cement, Gorilla Glue, whatever kind of engine RTV, papyrus, maple syrup, whatever. But I like to put just a little bit on here, and then when you stick this in place, It'll sit down where you need it to because on small block chebbies it's critical that you get silicone right where the head meets the block in the front and the back and if you don't do that you're gonna have some leaks like you wouldn't believe I'm not used to this fancy witchcraft model it just shoots right out I just I keep using too much and I just keep doing it I don't understand how I can't doesn't throttle down very good. Now after these are in, I'm going to wait a minute or two and then I'll come back and run a bead. I call them the china walls, the stand up or the end of the block things. I don't know. If you guys have a name for them, just bleep bloop them down there in the comments. Block maybe? Intake, end, sides, whatever. I'm going to let that sit for about five minutes. Then we'll come in and boop. You know, just snip on the manifold part of the blower over there. I think we're actually getting something done today. I just can't believe it. Boy, I, I really liked to use the RTV back in the day. That is... I was about to make fun of whoever put this on there, and then I was like, oh, wait. That was definitely me. It's like a half a tube per side. Guy just doesn't like oil leaks. They're a pain in the rump to deal with. Guess I can get that wire wheel in here and finish up the rest of this. Here's an interesting, if you look at the Chevy heads, you can see these, I call these windows. And you have a rail in between them. And if you look at the blower intake, She's just wide open. Main goal of this here is just to stuff as much air into that as possible so they don't even bother putting in that window. It's just a full runner right here. This thing's pretty old, but I tell you what, it's still shinier than Nelly's teeth. I ain't kidding you. Look at that bling. I can clean this up a little bit too, I guess. Oh, forgot a water neck. I got a lower rad hose we're picking up tomorrow. I think before 1030, something like that. I gotta add a water neck with a sharp angle this way. And they gotta be pretty low profile because that snout shoots out here like this. And it's gotta sneak underneath that. But I just wanted to clean this up really good before we stick it on. Once that case is on here, you can't get in all these crevasses and whatnot. I don't want it too clean, and then it won't feel right. Shiny things just I don't know, they just scare me a little bit. But if I can get all the oil that's been leaking on this for the last eight years off, that seems like it'd probably be okay. And then we can at least see the new oil leaks and not think they're old ones. There we go. I'm gonna let this air dry for a couple minutes and then we'll uh, pop it on the engine. Please don't mess this up. Yeah, pretty good. And I like to put just a little bit more in these corners and work it in. I don't know about this, but it might work. Sure doesn't look pretty. Yep, done. Good enough. I got the water neck gasket, but not the water neck. Oh, ha, there's my 
I just pack so randomly. Oil filter, we're gonna need that. Carburetor studs, we do need that. Hose clamps, just bought another pack. Idiot. Oh, there's some more, just in case I lost that pack. Smart. <laughs> Fix a flat, you never know. Anyway, I was after these. Oh no. The oil pressure sending unit is in the way. So what you do is you loosen those like that. And we'll try it again. Still in the way. Guess I'll just have to take that out. And I do have a couple other gauges with me. I know it has oil pressure. I could just cap it off, but I'll probably end up running a gauge. So I might as well run that plastic line into the inside of the interior and then put the little fitting in there. It's a little brass guy and it'll clear that. I usually always use those pipe fittings and they work tremendous, but there's some sort of weird doohickey mabobber on that intake that shoots out and hits that. So it's not going to work. So 14 steps forward, 39 back. Perfect. Oh, there's a hole. What does that cable do? Not a clue. Speedometer maybe? No. Not way over there, surely. Maybe I could shoot out of there. Getting stuck in fly traps. We got a stink beetle. Some other stuff in it. <laughs> Smells like ant spray so bad in here. Can hardly even breathe. I need a bigger light. Oh my gosh, for dead ants. It's fine. <laughs> Okay, I found that thing that goes through the plastic thing up to where the engine thing is. I just shoot through there with the plastic line. That'll get wrapped up with my feet. And then bring that. Where do we put gauges? Hook them in here somewhere. This will get in the way of my leg. It's probably gonna have to be down here. Maybe I bring them way over here. I'm not sure. We're gonna have a board meeting and discuss where to put these things. I already got enough problems with my Sasquatch legs fitting in this thing. You basically sit between the frame rail and the drive shaft and more stuff hanging down here, I'll just break it. I'm kind of thinking maybe we put a temp and an oil pressure maybe over here. Not sure. The clock is still working. I'll be dipped. I can't believe that. My hand is sweating anyway. That little delicate doodab. What is that, a 7 16th? Maybe? It's a half. Oh, this is a 3 8 anyway. Was a 3 8 anyway. Maybe it is 7 16th. Try not to mess up my superb silicone job here. Just gonna run a couple of these in just to make sure that the intake squared up on here or lined up or rectangled up whatever that's close enough gonna let it sit like this for five seven two minutes and then come back and just try to break all the bolts off in that and then i'm gonna stop there we got to take the fan off and start prepping to get the snout on. I got a pulley that goes on the crank snout down there we got to put on and some other stuff and maybe do a little bit of cleaning, start getting some of this other junk out of the way. This bracketry is wrong. I think I need to cut that to fit on the holly. Just there's a lot of piddling around basically is what I'm saying. I'm going to start just snugging some of these down just nice and easy. I'm hoping I got these Waller out adjuster uppers in that Ziploc bag of random parts over there. There's those deal my uppers I was talking about. I was actually smart enough to hang on to them, but I was also dumb enough to buy the same intake bolt kit again. Dang it. Uh, click, click. 22 foot pounds, right on the money. There, base is done. So, like I was saying earlier, we'll just tape this stuff off and then we'll start working on the Wijimawoos and the outer lying stuff in here. And the more that I sit here and think about it, I'm pretty positive I don't have anything 
but to hook this factory throttle linkage up to the go faster lever on the fuel make it happen or over there. So that's probably more stuff I'm going to have to get tomorrow. I think they make a retro kit that you can, you know, there's something you can do on there. But we'll at least get the fan off and I think start working towards getting that pulley on down there because I just, I've been procrastinating because basically you can't see, this is just, it's a nightmare. Yeah, that ain't gonna work. Now what do you do? Run an electric fan? You're gonna have to, right? I don't know. We got too much forwarder on the snoutage, which makes sense because I think this was an A-body kit. I'll probably have to notch this out too. At least we know where we're headed. Electric fan, the fan's gotta come off. I think I'm going to put the distributor in it actually because I got to roll this fan around to get the nuts off and if I do that we're going to likely move TDC but if I put the dizzy in it doesn't matter where I end up spinning the engine over we'll always end up in the same spot. I think I'm going to go on ahead and do that as soon as I, well, I'm just going to take a break for a minute I think. So here's our mark for the number one plug on the lightning cap. And basically I got it dropped in here. So this is zero TDC. And then we have advanced or retarded timing. And this gives me plenty of room here, or should anyway. Maybe I'll go one tooth over. There we go. So now if I roll the engine over, it doesn't matter. This is pretty much home and it can stay there. Whoops, there goes the bolt. Great. These are tighter than JLo's halftime outfit for some reason. You don't need the torque piece of 700 foot pounds, fellas. You just, you just put them on. You got a lock washer and everything. The challenge I'm gonna have tomorrow is who carries an electric fan, a universal, that's on the shelf? I might end up having to go to a junkyard or something and finding some kind of an electric fan out of an Isuzu Rodeo or something of similar awesomeness. And using that, we'll have to wire up a switch, maybe just find a hot on the ignition. I probably could wire it into the fan motor so when you turn the heater fan on, but I don't know. Digicals is not my thing. I'll probably just end up having a vice grip to the battery right behind me that turns the fan on for some reason. <laughs> See, you don't want to get them too tight. Just run them on. Yeah, so I think we'll come up here like this and then bring it over here. And then this is the part that we don't want. And then that'll give us room for that snout to come in here. I will most likely cut it four times, but we'll start with that line. Chip foos eat your heart out. Look at that. That's actually, I'm impressed. I'm impressed. I impressed myself. That's what I'm saying. Next, I gotta get these crank bolts out. Three of them gotta come out. I'll show you the pulleys that go in. So this piece basically goes inside of the crank pulley now, and then this sits on the outside, and then there's three long bolts that go all the way through to the engine, and that's what jets this out. And then this belt comes all the way up to the blower snout. That was correct. Well, sometimes you get lucky, and sometimes you get lucky. See, this is arm clearance. That's why I went so big, if you're wondering. You just got to plan ahead, think things out, and just draw up a plan if you have to. But I just knew that I needed the arm clearance, so that's why I went really big. So I got to go to the hardware store now and find a 9-foot bolt with this thread pattern. 
the brake proportioning valve is down here on the frame rail which on C3's the frame is the outside of the car so it actually goes out here so, ah, that'll never go back in while I'm down here we got some wires that are eaten by mice right here we got some more stuff that's just been eaten by mice Right here, ooh, AC Delco oil filter. I didn't do that, that was there. Some sort of Batman steering device. What I did here was I popped off the rear brake line because you don't need them. I'm gonna try to cap this off so when I, so when I bleed the brakes, I only get the front. Plant the front end and just bring the old rear end around, if at all possible. Or I can just hold it in place, that's my Plan D, if nothing works, is I'm just going to plant the front tires, dump the clutch, and redline it. Okay, what do we got here? That looks wrong. Well, it's really close, but I think it's wrong. Next, oh, it's just pouring on me. What about? It's in my eye. Burns a little bit. What about this one? Well, that's way too big, isn't it? Okay, that's wrong. When's this oil gonna run out? Fluid juice, whatever it is. Ooh, this might be a winner. I don't know if it's gonna stop it. It's not stopping it. Ah! Ooh, that's stripping. I think we're in a world of hurt now. I just, I'm getting just everything right in my teeth, in my eyes. I need to, it's time to come up with a plan. This looks, okay, is that the same as this? Well, I mean, it looks fairly close. No, and the thread's wrong. They're never gonna let me come back here again. But it's just putting, it's just filling the back one. It's like the Bellagio fountain. And I probably wanna do that electric fan first because, well, a guy could get his head in here and his arms and all that stuff. And then the rest of this is just gonna be bloop, 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 bloop. And Hopefully we make some smoke clouds. I got some tires coming up that you guys are going to want to hang around for. I've never used them before, but they look really interesting. Picked them up. They're out of Australia. Yeah, and I'm not, that's all I'm going to say for now. I don't want to spoil it yet, but we're going to put those on last. They're actually four independents, but since that car is not ready, I threw them on the trailer for this guy. But that's it for today. We're going to go get some shot eye, get some food get some parts and we'll be back tomorrow and see if we can button this thing up by three o'clock no that won't happen probably midnight <laughs>